Hey y'all, it's X, and welcome to my way too early 2025 NFL mock draft. Uh, to get some quick things out of the way, I meant to get this video out a while ago, um, or record this video a while ago, like as soon as the draft ended, but I just didn't really have time. Um, I'm now finally finished with uh, school for this year, so got a little bit of time before I have to go back to uh, my summer program, and then uh, yeah. We're just gonna keep rolling. But uh, essentially, what this is is I haven't really done a deep dive into any of these prospects yet. I'm really just going based off of what I have seen, like just from watching games and like short amounts of tape that I've seen from watching other players, uh, as well as just what the general consensus is right now. So this is a mix of my own opinions as well as mainly just what the consensus is right now on who's the best players in this class, who is a good fit where, things like that, right? So, <clears throat> let's just jump in here. Now, I've already said that this is... Well, I haven't said this yet. But this is uh, not my mock draft... Uh, or, sorry, not my um, draft order. So, I don't know if the Carolina Panthers will be picking pick one next year. I don't know. I think I think the worst team in the league is probably going to be Washington. That's my opinion. I just think that their team is just really, really bad. And at least, like, compared to Jaden Daniels, at least Bryce Young has a year of experience already. But um, going into year two, I think if, or sorry, going into year three at this point, I feel like if the Panthers are picking 1-1, one, one, Bryce Young probably did not have a great year. I would consider quarterback at this spot. However, I do think that there are a lot of good quarterbacks in this class. I don't know if there's a top end quarterback that I would take at pick one. So maybe this is something that they address in the second round if they want to just add some competition to that room. But we're not doing a two-round mock draft today, so that's for a later video. But what I am going to do is I am going to go with James Pierce here. Number one overall pick. Um, I think he's a really good player. I think he hasn't put it, he hasn't put it all together yet, but like what you see on tape and the potential that he has when you're just like, oh, if he just like cleans up some of his technique, um, you like he could be a very dominant edge rusher now my number one player in this class is will johnson but in my opinion i just don't really see cornerbacks going one one a lot round one pick one um it just I, like to me it just doesn't happen a lot so while it's very much possible i don't think they're like will johnson is the best cornerback that i've scouted since sauce gardner and i didn't even have sauce gardner going one because there were better edge, there was edge rushers who, even though I like Sauce Gardner more as a player, then although actually no, Aiden Hutchinson was my number one player that year, but Trayvon Walker was like my number ten. I did not love Trayvon Walker. Um, I just think corner is slightly less valuable because it's a more volatile position where there's a lot of ups and downs. Um, yes, getting a true boundary corner is a great idea, but it's a it's a lot harder of a position to hit on than edge. Pick number two, um, I basically am thinking tackle here for this team, possibly receiver, because they, their receiver room is a little bit older, um, but I don't think I like any of these guys. What I am thinking of, though, is Will Campbell. Depending on how JC Latham plays at left tackle this year, I would just say draft a left tackle move, uh, Latham back to his more natural right tackle position, but it really depends on how he plays. So. If he ends up being a very solid left tackle, draft Emory Jones with this pick. If he ends up being a really bad left tackle, but like maybe like the adjustments hard for him, switch him back to right tackle and draft Will Campbell. And I just think because Will Campbell is a more natural left tackle, anyways, we are gonna go with him number two overall. Patriots here at pick three. Um, they could definitely be in the in the room for corner, or definitely be in the running for corner. They could also be in the running for edge. I have said before that Abdul Carter is... I, I like Nick Scourton more than Abdul Carter, just because we haven't seen Abdul Carter actually play uh, Edge yet. But I think I, I, I'm going to wait on Scourton because I want him to go to a team that runs a 4-3, just because he's like 6'3", 280. Is 6'4", 280? Like, he's huge. That just sounds like somebody who should be playing more like on the line than more out in coverage, if that makes sense. So, Abdul Carter is actually a really good fit for the Patriots. I don't feel comfortable going him or going with him this high. So, I do think that I'm going to take my number one player in the class here, Will Johnson. Pairing him next to um, Christian Gonzalez is just very beautiful. I would just love to see that. So, that's a really good pick there. 
Denver here at pick four. This could be a receiver. I've seen Tedero McMillan here. Um, just a quick note on how, of course, trucks are going by. Uh, just a quick note on how I feel about Tedero McMillan at Arizona. I love him. However, I love him for the same reason I loved Keon Coleman. And Keon Coleman was projected to go within this range in everybody's way too early 2024 mock draft. But then when everybody realized that he's a straight line athlete and his hands are really like his best attribute, he doesn't run great routes. Um, and he's more of a straight line athlete who just has really great hands. He went in the late, he went in the early second round. He was like the first pick in the second round or something like that. No, actually it was Xavier. No, Xavier really get one end of first. Yeah. I think he was the first pick of the second round. So I, I expect Tyrone McMillan to go around that range. I don't see why. Like he's like my direct comp for him is Keon Coleman. So yeah, I'm going to wait a little bit on him. Um, other options, Luther Burden, I like him a lot. However, he's very similar to what they already have on roster. And I think he is a slot only guy. I think he has some effort concerns. He, while I did really like him going into the year, I watch uh, Alex from Hail Mary Sports a lot. And he talks about his effort concerns with Luther Burden and how he sometimes like kind of half runs routes or he'll give up on a route early. And I, I see that when I, when I went back and watched him, I could actually see that. So even though he is very explosive, very great underneath i think he's a i think he's going to be one of the best slot receivers in the nfl i wouldn't go with him here at this pick especially to the broncos so what's our next option um i think tackle is in consideration here i think they could be in the running for edge i think abdul carter would be interesting to this team i don't know if it's the best pick um abdul carter is definitely interesting though to add to that like linebacker slash edge room they could also be an interior team here this could be the mason graham spot uh, i haven't really considered going with him this high i've talked about how much i love walter nolan um yeah this is a really interesting spot like maybe kelvin banks or Embry jones could go in this spot um we're not gonna go with any interiors because those are just not gonna go that high in this class they could be a cornerback spot. You know what? Yeah, we're going to go Benjamin Morrison. <laughs> Not any of the options I said, but putting somebody next to uh, Patrick Sertan for the future would be really nice. I think the second best cornerback on the team is like, what, Riley Moss or something like that? Who else is on that team? Yeah, it's like it's like Patrick Sertan and then just a big drop-off. So, I love Benjamin Morrison. Um... I think a lot of people are going to ask, like, where's Travis Hunter going? How is he not your number one overall pick? Travis Hunter is probably the third best corner in this class. And his upside really comes out of the fact that he could play both sides of the ball. That's really what Travis Hunter is. He's not an elite. I, I wouldn't put him as an elite corner prospect. I think he's in, like, the top of tier two. I think tier one is Will Johnson, Benjamin Morrison. And I think the top of tier two could push into t to tier one, depending on how he plays. But, like... Travis Hunter is not a big guy, man. Like, Will Johnson, 6'2", 202. Benjamin Morrison is actually very, very similar in size to Travis Hunter. I feel like he looks smaller than 185. That's just my personal opinion. But Travis Hunter's upside really just comes from being able to play both sides of the ball, which is where his true top five value comes. But I think he's a late, not late first, but like late top 10 pick. Raiders here at number five, this is a quarterback spot to me. I think if you're picking at number five, Aiden O'Connell clearly didn't really do much to help you. And I think the most safe, so my number one quarterback is Jalen Milrow, right? However, for the Raiders, I think my number one quarterback would be Carson Beck. I think he's a more sure quarterback prospect. Um, I like Shader Sanders. I think there are some serious character concerns as well as the fact that Deion Sanders is his dad. And I don't think any NFL team wants to have to deal with Deion Sanders and his media presence just in their ear all the time. So I am going to go with Carson Beck here. He is my number two or three quarterback in this class. I haven't really decided yet. It's probably like Jalen Milrow. I'm a huge Jalen Daniels guy, so he's really like high up my board right now. I just need I just need to see him come back from injury. I like Connor Wigman a lot as well. Um, but yeah, Carson Beck to the Raiders here at five, I think is just a good way to uh, speed up this rebuild. I shouldn't even say rebuild, but speed up this like retool a little bit. Giants here at pick six. If you're picking at six, you're taking Jalen Milrow. Um, I want them to go quarterback anyways, and if we are the sixth worst team in the NFL, again, 
I think we need to get quarterback and seriously sure up that spot. Daniel Jones, we can get out of that contract this year. If we don't want Milrow to start right away, we sign a veteran for cheap and just let Milrow sit for a year and then move on from there. But I think Jalen Milrow is the perfect fit for the Giants. Pick seven. This is going to be my Mason Graham spot. Um, Mason Graham's a really, really talented interior. He's currently my number one. I really wanted to put Walter Nolan as my number one guy, but I need to see him play in this new system. I need to see him put it all together, but the potential he has is insane. Mason Graham has been a back-to-back... Uh, not Sorry, not back-to-back. I, I, I keep thinking Michigan won last year. No, they didn't. Um, now a national champion. Really big part of that defensive line. I mean, we didn't really pay... Like A lot of people talked about Chris Jenkins, and when I was watching Chris Jenkins last year, I'm like, holy damn, who is... Who is Mason Graham? I think he wore like 55 next year or last year or something like that. Or was that, what did he wear? I feel like he wore like a weird number, but I was just like, who is that guy next to Chris Jenkins? Like, yo, he is nice. And that was Mason Graham. So I really like him a lot, but um, I love Walter Nolan. You got, you guys, you guys, I'm going to have some crazy Walter Nolan takes as soon as he has that one good game. Just wait. Pick number eight here for Washington. I think that this is a, like, this is probably a cornerback spot. I'm going to push Dakario Davis up the board. Uh, his combination of just size and overall athleticism is really, really good. 6'4", 194. Moves really well for that size. Um, I think he could be a true boundary corner and gives that team size that they do not have right now. Kendall Fuller left in free agency. So now you're starting Benjamin St. Juice, Emmanuel Forbes, and I don't know who else. I think Quan Martin might move to slot cornerback this year. Um, Takario Davis just gives you more size that they desperately need. Pick nine for the Saints here. I'm going to give them Emory Jones. Emory Jones is probably the best right tackle in this class. Um, Ryan Ramchick is probably going to retire by the end of next year, if not just this offseason. Um, it seems like he hasn't decided yet, but he has some very chronic leg issues, I believe is what it was, or knee issues. Um and his career is most likely over so i think playing for the future after just drafting talise fuaga showing up both ends of that tackle uh tackle room just great idea pick 10 here for the vikings um i think this is the perfect spot for somebody like dan walker to go dan walker this team just needs interior d-line and dan walker is a freak six foot six 348 and he plays like it I think my biggest concern with him is the fact that he is so big and he plays very upright. He doesn't really get down on uh, in, his, in his stance. He's very upright and it shows he gets put down a lot. But the potential of just hit, the way he moves at 6'6", 348 is unlike anything I've ever seen before. So if he can put it together and make and, and get a little bit lower in his stance, I think he will actually be an elite defensive tackle in the NFL. I think he could just be better than Walter Nolan, to be honest, and and uh, Mason Graham. Like he could easily be D tackle one in this class if he puts it all together. Pick eleven here. Um, I, I am gonna go with Travis Hunter with this pick. I don't really know where I want to put him. I just don't know what coach is going to best utilize him. Um, and going somewhere that has a solid defense could probably benefit him. Tampa Bay isn't bad. Uh, they just lost Carlton Davis. Or was it Carlton Davis? Yeah, they lost Carlton Davis and traded him to the Lions. Um, so getting a replacement for him is, is good. I just, I really don't know where to put him because I'm thinking of possibly with the upside of him playing like slot receiver for this team. He wouldn't have to play a lot of snaps because again, you have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Um, so he could just get a couple reps in the slot, be that guy who just runs simple routes underneath, doesn't have to stretch the field a ton, uh, but he can, he definitely can, and then is just primarily a cornerback, which this team desperately needs, so that's kind of the thought process with that. All right, next pick here, pick 12, Seattle Seahawks, Harold Perkins is like my dream fit for him. Um, a lot of people are going to be like, how is he not a top five guy? Harold Perkins is too undersized to be an edge rusher at 6'1", 221. So if he could get up to like two, it's asking a lot out of him, but like 245, 250, then we could talk about him as an edge, but I just don't see it happening really. So I think his best role is going to be something like a Patrick Queen. And I think with Pete Carroll not being the head coach, but still being an advisor, I think he could at least help him, uh, 
help him develop into something like a better version of a Patrick Queen, who's better in coverage, but also can blitz the hell out of the QB. Um, so he could probably be a, rot a rotational edge rusher as well as just a regular starting linebacker, but I really like that pick. Pick 13. We still haven't seen any receivers go off the board, and I'm going to continue that. The Colts don't need receiver. Um, I'm not going to go Colts and Loveland this early. However, because I, I when I did that, I did one like half take through this, and I had to re-record the video. I, I didn't get Malachi Starks to go as high as I wanted him to. I'm going to go Malachi Starks to the Colts. I couldn't really find a better fit for him anywhere else within like the top 20 because I think he truly is a top 20 player in this class. Might even be a top 10 player in this class. Malachi Starks is one of the best safeties I've ever watched. I love him. Georgia's defense is insane. I love just any Georgia player, defensive line or not. Um, so I really just think Malachi Starks is that talented and I think just putting him in that Colts defense could just be really, really nice. Steelers here at 14. I'd love to go quarterback for them. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to go Luther Burden. You lose Deontay Johnson by trading him to the uh, Panthers, and you need somebody to replace that type of production. I think Luther Burton is the perfect replacement to be a good slot for somebody. So, yeah, I think they still have, like, Calvin Austin on that roster. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying into that. They, I feel like they did draft a receiver, though. Um, I forgot who. But Luther Burton is just that type of talent where I think he has to go within the top 20. Like, really could have been within the top 10. I just didn't find a good spot to put him. So first receiver off the board now, Jacksonville Jaguars here, pick 15. Abdul Carter still on the board. I don't think that this is the spot for him. Um, I don't know if this team really needs um, receiver. They could use tackle. Like Kelvin Banks is still on the board here. I don't hate that. Um, Denzel Burke is still on the board, actually. We could, we could definitely go Denzel Burke. Um, who are their cornerbacks? Tyson Campbell and is that it? Yeah, let's go Denzel Burke. Uh, really, really good boundary cornerback for Ohio State. Could have came out last year and probably would have been like a mid first, early second grade for me. But I think he's one of the better corners in this class. Um, right up there, right up there in that tier two was Travis Hunter, in my opinion. So yeah, pretty excited about that pick. Pick 16 for the Browns here. It's the first time I've seen them have a first round pick in a little bit, I feel like. Um, do they need tackle? I mean, I know they have Dewan Jones now. Jedrick Wills, is he still on that team? Jack Conklin, is he still on that team? I don't know. Calvin Banks is somebody that I'm thinking about here. They don't need corner. That's 100%. Receiver would be interesting if I gave them a Mecca Ibuka. Um, I'm not going to go linebacker this side. So it's either tackle or receiver for me because you have Amari Cooper. You just brought in Jerry Judy, and you kind of need that third guy, depending on how they feel about Elijah Moore. I feel like they're fine. Let's go tackle. We're going to go Kelvin Banks here. I don't know much about Ernest Green. He's high ranked on this website, but I haven't really heard too much about him. Um, maybe just because I haven't paid attention to offensive line. I just know these names more uh, within Emory Jones, Will, uh, Will Campbell, and Kelvin Banks. But yeah, I haven't really done my research on Ernest Green yet, so I'll probably put him in here, but I'm not really sure. Uh, LA at pick 17, this all depends on how their season goes. If they're at pick 17, I'm assuming Stafford played all right. You could still look to draft a quarterback here. Like Quinn Ewers would be a really interesting, a really interesting player for this team just because of how strong his arm is and pretty, comp uh, pretty comparable to Matthew Stafford in like his earlier days. Um, but this team could definitely use corner as well. Ephesians Prysock is somebody that I would definitely push into the first. Um, I do kind of want to get another quarterback in here, but I'm not really sure about how I'm going to do that. Receiver is interesting. Like, Emeka Obuka could definitely be somebody. If you think Puka Nakua is going to be your slot wide receiver of the future and replace Cooper Cup, Emeka Obuka could play on the outside. You know, let's do it. Let's get a Mecca Ibuka on this team. I want him to go in the top 20, and I don't know if any of these three teams will take him. Probably, it would be the Falcons. Um, Emeka Ibuka is really talented. He could have came out and been a top 20 pick last year, um, but he didn't. Stayed another year at Ohio State and probably looking to take over as the number one receiver in this class, which he could very well do, to be honest. Like, 
Luther Burton's a slot only. I think Tyrone McMillan is going to lose hype as the year goes on, even though I love him. Um, I just think that based on how the NFL saw Keon Coleman, I think they'll see Tyrone McMillan the same way. So Abuka could easily slide into that uh, wide receiver one spot. Pick 18 for the Chargers here. Um, we are going to go with Colson Loveland. It is the perfect fit. Get Jim Harbaugh's guy from Michigan. Not much else to be said. Uh, Chicago at 19. They run a 4-3. You know what? We're going to get Nick Scourton in here. I needed I needed him to go higher, but none of these teams really needed edge like that. Um, but Nick Scourton is such a talented player. I think putting him next to Montez Sweat could be pretty nasty. I know a lot of people are going to be like, why is Abdul Carter falling so much? Again, I am not going to put someone high based off of how I think he's going to do it a position compared to other players who have proven themselves to be able to play that position. I think Abdul Carter could be a good edge, but he just very limited sample size last year of him actually doing it. So now that he's moving into that role full time, we really need to see him actually perform. So I'm waiting until I see it to actually make a move on that. Um, so this is just under the assumption that it doesn't really work out or he's just okay at it. But I'm not trying to like hate on him at all. Like I love Abdul Carter. Don't get me wrong. Pick 20 for the Falcons. This could definitely be a receiver. Um, this could also be an edge. This is probably where I'm going to put Abdul Carter, actually. Yeah, we're going to go Abdul Carter to the Falcons here. Um, another 3-4 team where, like, him next to Arnold Ebikady, if Ebikady could ever develop, really nice idea. Um, two really solid athletes just running you down on the outside, but we need Ebikady to step up for sure. Or he's just Ebikady's replacement. That's really what this could be. Um, Dolphins here, pick 21. They need interior so bad. The only guy that I think could go in the first round is Tyler Booker out of Alabama. Uh, mainly based off of consensus, but also just uh, what I've seen. I just haven't really seen much out of the other guys. Green Bay at 22. This could be an interior pick. And I either want to go with Kenneth Grant or Walter Nolan here. I think I want to go with Kenneth Grant. Kenneth Grant is huge. Could replace... Um, who's the... Ken Kenny Clark. 6'3", 339, great run stopper with some pass rush upside. Really like him a lot. Jets here at 23. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Website's like bugging a little bit. Um, Jets here at pick 23. Um, You know what? Tedero McMillan isn't a bad idea. Tedero McMillan definitely is not a bad idea. Um, I'm not going to go with a running back here. Could be a quarterback as well. But if you're picking at pick 23, I'm assuming Rodgers had a solid amount left in the tank, and you're probably just going to wait on a quarterback. To me, it's between Tedero McMillan and Walter Nolan. Um, they traded John Franklin Myers, so getting somebody next to uh, Quinnen Williams could be really helpful for him. Um, I don't think they need edge. I don't think they need corner. Let's go Tedero McMillan. I think Mike. I think he's just going to end up being the Mike Williams replacement. I think Mike Williams is on, what, a one-year deal? So Tedero McMillan can just come in and do what Mike, Milliam, what, what Mike Williams does and just be healthier. Pick 24 here for the Texans. I am going to give them Walter Nolan. Um, yeah, I, I, this is like a dream fit to me because Walter Nolan with D'Amico Ryans as his DC next to Will Anderson... Oh my god, that's beautiful. I just, I just love thinking about that. Cowboys here at pick 25. Uh, you could assume they probably sold in the playoffs again. Probably won a quarterback. I'm joking. Could be a receiver. Could be like Isaiah Bond. Could be like Tez Johnson. A look at a Umanor, Trey Harris. Evan Stewart even. Um, running back is a possibility. Running back is definitely a possibility. Do I think that they go running back in round one, though? Okay. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to go running back, and I'm going to really, I'm gonna really confuse people with this one. We're going to take Trevor Etienne as running back one in this class. Now, here's why. Uh, Trevor Etienne, one, is such an underrated running back prospect because, yes, he, by the way, he is the brother of Travis Etienne, but, um... He's very underrated because people just didn't really take into account the fact that, like, he's now at Georgia, and I think he could really, really up his production there as opposed to Florida, which is just a terrible team. 
but he has real running back one upside. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Great runner, very patient, great athleticism in general. And I think probably just the most well-rounded back in this class. I think he would just replace what they wanted Tony Pollard to be. And I think he would actually just be better than Tony Pollard because Tony Pollard was not the same type of runner that Trevor Etienne was. He had the receiving upside, but the reason that uh, Pollard played so well is because he had Zeke there. So I think Trevor Etienne could be interesting. I don't know if the Cowboys go running back in the first round, but I don't know. Just getting creative with it. Um, Eagles here at pick 26. This could be a tackle spot for them. I might just throw uh, Ernest Green up here just because. Could be an edge spot. Could think of Prince Umamilin. Um, could be an interior spot, but like, Tylee Williams is probably the last guy I'd throw with in the first round. Shout out Thor Griffith. I know him. Um, he used to go to Harvard. Um, I think they're good at corner. I wouldn't go Barrett Carter this high. I don't think Barrett Carter is a first-round linebacker just yet. Um, hmm. Ernest Green being on the board probably is just going to be the pick. Yeah. I again, I just ha I don't know much about him. This is just what this website has him as, but that means nothing to me. Like Prince Prince Umamulin is not my fifteenth best player in this class. I'll tell you that much. Danny Dennis Sutton is somebody who I have in like the second round. Um, Bengals here at pick 27. I've like set myself in a running back here and I'm going to give them Ollie Gordon. Ollie Gordon's probably my actual running back one in this class. I think he's really, really talented. There are like three running backs. So I think could go in the first round in this class. It's just such a good class. I do expect some people to probably return to school and be the top back next year. But like Judkins is probably going to come out. Gordon's probably going to come out. ETN's probably going to come out. Trevion Henderson, I think has to come out. Uh, Hampton's probably going to come out. GNT probably comes out. I, I think Singleton maybe stays another year because I think Nick Singleton, it, depending on how um, uh, just this class looks or how he performs this year, I think he might wait another year. But his teammate as well, um, I don't know where he is. Do they not have his teammate on this website? Uh, Katron Allen? Wow, they don't have Katron Allen on the website. That's interesting. Uh, Katron Allen is also really good too. He could also just be a running back one. But Bills here at 28, they could definitely use an edge rusher. This is going to be where I'm going to put Prince Lee Umamulin. Um, somebody who I think is really talented, just transferred to Ole Miss. I think he was also at Florida last year, so he's going to play next to Walter Nolan, and it's going to be really interesting to see those two together. Pick 29 here. Um, hmm. What do we do here? The Lions could also use an edge, kind of. I like Mikel Williams a lot. I don't know if it's Michael or Mikel Williams. By the way, Jalen Walker is in the same spot as Abdul Carter, where I'm just like, he's not a true edge rusher, so let's see how he plays first. Safety is interesting for this team. I would give them more of a free safety. I don't know if that's what Xavier Nawakba does. Uh, I, f I feel like he's a strong safety. Corner isn't a terrible idea. Interior, don't, aren't, they, oh yeah, aren't they about to lose uh, Ali McNeil possibly? I think he's a free agent next year. Unless they extended him and I just didn't know about it because I don't pay attention. Um, Let's go Tyleek Williams. Probably the last guy I'm going to throw into the first round for this interior class. I think he's really good. Out of Ohio State, probably would have been a second rounder if he came out this year. Uh, but he's really talented as well. Baltimore, they could use a receiver for sure. It, I just want to give them somebody with some size. Because, like, they have Zay Flowers kind of as their number one. Rashad Bateman, I don't think they're going to end up bringing back. So, you know what? I think I'm either going to give them... Alec Aominor absolutely destroyed uh, Colorado last year. He's 6'2", 209, decent size on him. And then Trey Harris, I know, has some good measurements as well and really good hands. You know, let's go Trey Harris. I like him a lot. San Francisco at 31 here. Um, corner, maybe? Oh, yeah, we haven't got Ephesians Prize Sock in the first round. Yeah, let's get Ephesians Prize Sock to the 49ers. That's a steal. If I had known that he was still on the board, which I, I just completely forgot about, he would have gone, like, Bengals at 27 at least. Probably even earlier than that, though. Like, I probably could have pushed him 17 instead of the Mecca Obuka. Yeah. She's here at 32. Could go safety. Uh, Xavier Nawakba is actually a really good 
pick for them. I'm not going to give them an interior. Don't think I'm going to give them a receiver. I don't think there's any cornerbacks that I would take at this point. Like, Jordan Hancock is good. Jalen Everett's not bad. Jabbar Muhammad is pretty solid. Maxwell Harrison isn't bad. Kobe Bryant I like a lot. But you know what? Let's go Xavier Nwankba. Nwankba. I like him a lot. He could definitely be a first-round player. So that is going to be the, our mock draft. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. Again, none of this is going to be real. Some of these guys are going to return to school. Some of these guys are just going to have terrible years and completely fall out of the first round. Um, but yeah, really excited to see how the season goes. We will be keeping up with it all season. I will be handing out some pretty frequent mock drafts for you guys as soon as the season starts. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to leave a like and sub if you want to mess with the content. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.